Martina Navratilova continue their spectacular tennis rivalry under the hot Houston sun in a match that some felt was one of their greatest ever. Martina took control in the first set and won at 6-3. But the court is play, Everts specialty. In the second set, Chris Everett hung tough and stormed back to take the set easily, 6-1. These two tennis greats, who have spent a total of 12 years ranked number one, battled back and forth in the third set. Martina, just two points away from victory at 5-4, couldn't put Chrissy away. The set went into a tiebreaker, and with a score 6-4, Chris hits the shot that ends the nearly three-hour-long struggle. And today, one of the most compelling sports rivalries of all time continues. From the Westside Tennis Club in Houston, Texas, Home Sports Entertainment presents the Virginia Slims of Houston. Today, the singles final matching Chris Everett against Martina Navratilova. The Virginia Slims of Houston is brought to you by Toyota. Toyota quality. Who could ask for anything more? And a very pleasant good day, everyone. I'm Greg Lucas on this breezy but sunny day here in Houston as we get set for the singles final. And I'm joined by a couple of veteran tennis stars and commentators. On my right, Kathy Jordan, who's out right now because of an injury. And on my left, Jim Parker, who, of course, has been with us on many of our telecasts on HSC. We have a couple of great names in tennis, certainly, that are going at it here in this championship. And who better to start with than Martina Navratilova, who has been on top and right now is ranked number two. She's got to take on Chris Everett Lloyd, someone she's had some problem with on this surface. Yeah, last year in Houston, uh, Martina lost to Chris in the finals here, but and also in the Australian Open earlier this year. But right now, I'd say Martina's on a roll. She's won five tournaments, and this being her sixth tournament that she's in the finals here this year. So I think we're looking for a good final, and Martina is definitely the favorite today. Especially, perhaps, because she lost here last year, the revenge factor? Well, that was a great match last year, and uh, I think on clay, you know, that, that it's going to be a more even match, that Chris's best service is on clay. But I don't think that, you know, the revenge factor is there. It's been a year. She's played Chris in between. There's a lot of matches going on, so I'm sure she's thinking about it, and she wants to make up for it. Well, there's one vote for Martina, maybe, as a pick to win. Jim Parker, an analysis on Chris Everett. You, of course, followed her career for many years. Uh, she's ranked number three. Pressure's somewhat off because uh, she's not one or two, but she plays well on this type of surface, and uh, you know she wants to defend that title. Yeah, I, I do think that that really is a factor. I think the fact that she... Uh, if she wins, it's a great win for her now. And if she loses, uh, everybody kind of says, well, you know, she's had hers, and she is uh, probably limited in the number of years that she's really going to continue playing. But I also think that uh, that can make her a little bit more dangerous. She's always been a little bit more comfortable on clay, and she has a winning record against Martina on clay. Instantly, I think they've won, I think she's won 10 out of 13 times they played on clay, which, uh, you know, that goes back a long way. But she did beat her here last year, and she seems to be able to get up when she really needs to. And in fact, she beat her in the Australian Open earlier this year. So she's still really competitive, and I think a lot of it just depends on what kind of day they have out here today. Well, it's a beautiful day, a little bit breezy right now. Now, this is the 77th meeting between these two. Chris has the big advantage on clay overall. Martina leads by four, 40 to 36. We'll see what happens in this, the 77th matchup in just a couple of minutes. You stay with us. We'll be back in Houston after this timeout. She's 33, but hasn't lost much off that ranking. Martina 
has driven a little bit long here. Both the same type of situations where she's missed points. strange game sometimes you're trying to get your feel trying to get your rhythm even if you've warmed up you're adjusting to the court the wind is really a factor out here today and of course it's going to change each time the change sides from the uh, north end of the court you're hitting a little bit into the wind right now but uh, it looked to me really like uh, Chrissy is kind of relaxed and hitting the ball solidly and, and Martina uh, made a couple errors that are real normal in a first game situation she didn't miss by much but she missed a couple of backhands one was a chip and one was a was a topspin ball, but I mean, you, no, you can't tell anything from the first game because she held serve and uh, you're there to loosen up, but really you feel like if you can get an early start in a match, it's definitely going to give you an edge. Chrissy doesn't, I hope she's not established any kind of uh, superiority and it's tough to make any reading on the first game, but they're both hitting the ball fine. Kathy, on a situation like that where you have the wind and yeah, you I know your opponent, but are you really feeling things out in that first game? Yeah, I think that, I think what well, we ought to watch a little bit from now on. Um, Martina is now serving with the wind I believe. So I think the wind, is, as Jim said, is going to play a very big factor. I think we'll, if someone is able to break serve against the wind, if Chris were to win this game, I think it would be a big advantage for her. Well, Martina Navratilova will be serving Everett winning the first game. The singles final here. Martina has won over, well, almost $13 million. <laughs> Is that tennis all? Pro, as is a that tennis all? Pro, that's all, but it keeps rising. She's on a string of five straight tournaments, including last week in Florida. She wants that number one ranking back. Yeah. She's gunning for it. Steffi Graf is right now the only player ahead of these two. with how she's played this week. She's been real solid off the ground and she's been pretty consistent uh, in her match yesterday. She uh, got herself out of a lot of holes that uh, oh. Hakami put her in. I thought Hakami is a good ground striker. She just didn't have enough to hurt her with. But Martina yeah. looked sharp. Hmm. First controversy of the match. Let me check to see if there's a mark on that serve. It is out. Second serve. One major advantage with play. You leave your marks. <laughs> she didn't want to say that. She stopped. <laughs> really, I mean, it, it takes a lot less to get Martina a little bit irritated and. Uh, Sometimes she plays better when she gets here. Yeah. Overall, I'd say anybody that's as, uh, I don't know, as fragile as Martina can be, it really can be a factor sometimes. Yeah. It's surprising to see her get upset that her. Oh. Just shows you how eager she is to win this match. Mm -hmm. oh, she's a little uh, touchy. Yeah, she's really. Into well, she's, I don't think she's happy. She's not sharp yet at all. Some of the shots she's missed were ones she wouldn't ordinarily miss. <laughs> uh, 
really, it. really blew it in. Yeah. She's just, she's missed some shots. She is not, uh, you know, a lot of unforced errors. I don't know, I mean, I... here's the uh, replay. This is where Chrissy lobs up that ball that uh, blows in with the wind. Perfect uh, use of the wind there. And really ends up kind of extricating herself there. Meanwhile, a booming serve. So it's 15-40. You know, it's interesting. I was talking to uh, Tim Gullickson a little earlier, who's been coaching Martina, and uh, he said that really one of the things he felt that Martina was doing better than she'd ever had before was uh, serving wide into the deuce court. Now, she missed about four of those serves yeah, in, that, in that game. She just tried it about four times, so she's liking that serve. them on both ends of the court of the first game she was uh, she was long with a couple of back ends the end of the wind and she's also been long with the wind so she's just not sharp yeah, that was a good four hands yeah. Yeah. I think really though a game that uh, like Martina has is uh, a little bit tougher at first to get under control. She knows she has to force the play a little bit. She doesn't want to just stand back and rally with Chris all day, and so she's trying to do a little bit more right now. Yeah. Oh. for Chris to win this game here, if she does, because then uh, we're looking at three loves, so Martina needs to get back in here. Again, this is, there you see what we alluded to earlier in the previous match. Out! 40 She whaps at the air off camera, as you see Chris Everett. This is clay, green clay. is probably making it even more difficult is the wind actually is stronger now than it was when the players were out for their early warm up uh, two hours ago. It was not blowing this much. So they really weren't able to gauge it. Yeah, plus it's uneven. I mean, it's not like it's blowing at a constant speed the whole time, same direction. <laughs> Slims of Houston after this timeout. Seeing her go yeah. out, but it, you know those earlier matches are, are have a lot to do with what happens here today. What yeah. kind of momentum they develop through the week, and, and uh, whether they feel like they're playing well in the earlier matches. Exactly, and especially if they get tired from a match. Albert Alova still having problem with that first serve. You know, what we're seeing here with uh, Everett in command primarily on missed shots by Martinez, 
very much unusual. She has won 29 straight matches. This is Martina, and she's only lost two sets during that time in five straight tournaments. 15 all. That's kind of vintage Martina there. Yeah. Chrissy, you're right, has not had to do a lot so far. She's been solid, and she hasn't had to be spectacular in any way. That, of course, has been mostly her career, just mistake-free. <laughs> Martina cannot establish her uh, attacking game. We're going to see a, a split screen here. Here we can see uh, Chrissy, I think, hitting the passing shot. There she goes there. But if Martina has trouble establishing her uh, attacking game, she's going to have trouble in this match because uh, she's got to dominate Chris in order to win. Second serve. She hasn't been making some spectacular shots. She's certainly made some nice workmanlike ones on the passing lanes. Here's Martina. We're going to see her approaching, coming to net. And Chris hitting for the second straight point. Her forehand passed down the line. Her third service of the four in this game has had to go to a second serve. I think this is probably the biggest yeah. point of the first set so far. I think you're right. Martina can get this game from this point, obviously, she needs. And again, second she'll have to serve. go on a second serve. Uh, overall plan is against another player just by seeing how they play those big points. It looked to me like Martina wanted to go in, but she's getting a little bit and tentative then, about getting in there. And then also you can see Chris hit about seven straight balls to Martina's backhand, waiting for the error, and she got it. by much, but it's enough to lose the point. Perfect shot. That's the pattern that, that Chrissy does not like for her to get into. Now, there you, here you, I think we're going to see the beginning of the point here is Chrissy serving, but what will eventually happen is that uh, Martina gets in on her forehand approach shot, and it's wide to Chrissy's backhand, so she's in a tough position. What's a beautiful ball. Oh. Second serve. right now, what, what do you think you'd be trying to do? Well, I think she still has to play her game, and I think uh, she's just got to try to execute a little better. Concentrate to keep those balls in. Thank 
Lucy Martinez start to assert herself and take control. Well, she needs it. She needs a break. Ever is up two breaks and four love here in the first set. Yes, missed. 30, 40. Martina right now is against the wind. Sometimes when you need to, to loosen up, it, it actually helps to be against the wind because you can really swing out at the ball. And she's doing that. I think that error was really just swinging out at it. Yeah. It's going to help her to stop being tentative and get over that, that deficit she's down. <laughs> Floated right out. Yeah. There's just enough of a crosswind. Now, you know, that lob that Chrissy hit went in because of it, and Martina hit the other side of the court with it. So uh, th here's Chrissy coming into Martina's backhand. This is the way she likes to come in. If she comes in at all, notice how far back Martina is. So she almost has to lob, and it blows out. Gone to deuce. Oh, that's a good serve. Advantage goes to Everett. Martina's starting to press a little bit, isn't she? Yeah, I think it looked earlier in this game at 15:40 like she was getting more comfortable, and now advantage Everett. set. We're at the Virginia Slims of Houston singles finals. We'll be back in a moment. Uh, in her quarterfinal match, losing the first uh, set, but and then Garrison actually uh, tough first set, but then she came back and won it in two. She's only had to go three sets once. Yeah, in that particular match, I think uh, Gretchen Majors, it almost looked like once she won that first set that she had done what she came to do. It was a real definite change in her intensity level. She was probably surprised, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Greg Lucas here along with Jim Parker, Kathy Jordan. Kathy, of course, two-time doubles champ at Wimbledon. Semifinals at Wimbledon in 84. Has victories over both of our competitors here. Ranked as high as fifth in the world, but currently recuperating from arthroscopic surgery on a knee. She won't be back till mid-summer. Well, Robert Alova double faults. There's that serve you're talking about. Yeah, it looks Tim like she's, has uh, her working she, on. She looks like she's determined to, <laughs> to get her working here today. <laughs> You know, point. There's been uh, there was one match where uh, Chrissy beat Martina Love and Love back about I don't know ten years ago. No, it, well, it's about five, yeah. Was it that in it, Amelia Island? Yeah. It's just. Uh, but then Mar Martina beat her the next year, I think, the same oh, final, so like two, two in love. love. Yeah. yeah so. Well, the difference here is that Martina would be the one wanting their revenge because they both met here last year, but right now it's Everett off to a super start. And the game goes to Chris Everett, one, two, three, four, and it's six love first set score. When I was growing up, there uh, the guy told me one time that you should never beat a good player six love. <laughs> and it's, it's always interesting to see. I, I, you know, huh. it, I, this to me is a real surprise. It'd be interesting to see how Martina changes her, you yeah. know, somehow adjusts uh, now to the fact that we got a new set. Last two times uh, 
They met, of course, in the Australian Open in January. Chris won at 6 2 7 5. Or is Martina upset? Kathy was saying earlier that, that uh, Martina really has it in her head that she wants to regain that number one ranking. And a match like this is, is something that can kind of slow her momentum a little bit. Martina and Chris having a baseline rally. And you can see Martina hitting blistering forehand. Down the line, winner. All week I felt like she's been hitting that forehand well. Uh, I think probably the errors that she's made in the first set have been more backhand errors. But yeah. uh, she needs to bring that forehand in operation before she's going to really control these points. I think Chrissy's done a good job of keeping that ball going to her back. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, coming in off of Chris's second serve. Great lob over her head. Chris hitting a short ball. Martina coming back into the net, being very aggressive. Chris overheating the pass. Thirty all. The Martina's coming in every point this game so far. I mean, especially with the win, I can see where she really does want to get in as much as she can. It'll be interesting to see if that's something that she really tries to maintain through the set. She should, don't you think? Yeah, I think that's the only way she's really, I mean, right now she's obviously not being successful staying back when she is. Just as she was getting ready to hit that shot. Sneaker caught off the clay, it appeared. There we got uh, Chrissy hitting that ball. I think just when Martina goes to come in, that ball almost rolled. It looked like it only came in about half a foot off the ground. Set. One game love. I think that was a big game, actually. I mean, I, I, I really felt like maybe Martina was going to suddenly take hold and yeah. get a service break. And actually, I think sometimes, it, it, don't you find it hard sometimes to hold serve in that first game of the second set yeah. after you had kind of a cruising first set? Yeah, especially, you know, you know how crucial it is at the beginning of the second set because, you know, things have started over again. You know, you've won one set, but so what? You need to get the next one. And uh, that's a big advantage for Chris to have one serve there, especially against the wind. Now, as we've seen, of course, uh, Chris Everett for many years had the reputation of the ice princess, the ice maiden, calm, cool, collected. She has had no reason to be anything but that, the way things have gone so far today. The volatility and the, the anger at certain times at herself and recognizing people saying things in the crowd. It's tough to criticize Martina with the tremendous record she has had, but has that played a part in perhaps some of the times when she hasn't won? Yes, I think you're absolutely right. I think she's much more emotional and expresses it than Chris does, and that's part of her personality. I don't think she can change that. Sometimes that's to her advantage that she can then, you know, psych herself up that way. But I think Chris is the most mentally... Um, Stable. I'm not trying to say other people are unstable, but <laughs> but uh, that's one great reason for the success of her career is because she never beats herself, and she's always concentrating and focused on the match. Whereas sometimes Martina might get too too angry and lose her focus. Well, she'll have to bring it back in focus as they've relined and swept the court, smoothed it out. Now we're to Lova serving. Oh. 
This is one of these matches you just expect at any moment. Martina all of a sudden to pull it together, but she hasn't yet. Double, Double fault. fault. And, you know, the crowd really is starting to want her to come back here. They're, they're want to see a, a well-contested match. So far, it really hasn't been. struggling here. She yeah, really is. A, her, the error count we checked during one of our breaks was up to 11 to 1. I don't know what, maybe Jim can check an update on it. But Looks like 15 now. She's made 15 unforced errors. You aren't going to win many. Unless your opponent makes she's just as many, by a and lot. that's not the case. I mean, that's her. She yeah. missed by 10 feet. Yeah. That's pretty uncharacteristic. She's had a few of those in the arsenal, but she just hasn't had enough. But more importantly, she's had too many of the other shots she's supposed to make, the routine shots that she has. Oh, oh that's a is. fabulous <laughs> shot. <laughs> that's two in a row now. <laughs> it's going to take some shots like that to really get her fired up again. Oh. I mean, it, it, you know, it's every once in a while, just making a couple great winners can kind of activate you again. And she's, you know, she's still in this match, obviously. She wins this game. If it's anybody's match. It's just that if it gets too far slip by, she's going to really have to play great to catch up. I think it really, it really illustrates the, the, uh, the changing things in the game, that she will have won five tournaments in a row, and here she loses a first set six love to somebody. And again, only the third set that she lost in 20, no, actually in 30. Of course, that's somebody's Chris Ever. That's true. Yeah, somebody. <laughs> right. I guess if you're only going to lose three out of 30, you might as well lose it big. It still counts as only one set. That's, that's a great right. drop shot. That's a great save. There you go. She's had three super shots now in this game. Martina and Chris at the base now. We see Martina now getting a super drop shot. Chris coming in and covering it. And Martina just putting a little lob over Chris's head. I mean, Martina was in trouble when she hit that shot. She too. was. That was a great lob. She she trailed about 30 and then had three real good winning shots. thing is, Jim, is that when Steffi plays Martina, she pounds Martina's forehand. And Chris huh. goes to the backhand. Well, Bill Tilden used to always recommend well, hitting at the, the player's strength until it folds. If oh, their think, strength to fold. But it's just, I think that Steffi considers Martina's strength to be her backhand. And Chris you think so? It. Really? Mm -hmm. Forehand is, is definitely more uh, well, let's get penetrating. Let's get a third opinion. What is your opinion when you play? I uh, think Martina's forehand is weaker in, in many instances. She misses it Although more. Although she'll make more winners with it. Yeah. 
So Everett wins the game, leads it two games to one in the second set after winning the opening set six love. We'll be back with more from the West Side Tennis Club here in Houston in just a moment. Here's the prize money breakdown. So as you can see, this is worth a difference of $28,000 in first and second place. How much do you think the money has an effect on the way they react to a match? <laughs> I don't think, I think none at all until they're finished and then they say, oh, shoot, I should have I won 28,000 more if I'd won that match. I mean, I'm just having trouble really grasping that 28,000 is almost meaningless, but, uh, yeah, well, you know, it's strange, to, as you would say to most people. But. We mentioned before, Jim, Martinez won almost 13 million, so what's another 28,000, right? Yeah, it's just <laughs> running around money for the week. Now, Chris Everett actually has one more, uh, one more, but she started just a few years before and hasn't won as much money. Horses are high. Good shot. Stretched her out. Get a chance to look at uh, some of the things that have happened here in the first set. Thing. Yeah, the big difference is the unforced errors, 15 to 1. 33% on the first serve percentage for now Lova, as opposed to 68%. Martina's first serve is going well. Her game is going well. So we can see what a difference that makes in the first set. Do you feel like there's any difference uh, coming into Chrissy's forehand, coming into her backhand? Well, her backhand is her better shot. And Although she has good passes off the forehand, though. I would rather come into her forehand than her backhand, though. I'm sure Martina does, too. One of Martina's favorite uh, approaches is cross-court, which has always surprised me. She hits that forehand cross-court to the right-hander's backhand. Yeah, she has that kind of continental forehand that likes to go cross-court. That's why. We got Chrissy in the ground strike uh, rally. Then Martina comes in. She comes in down the line, which uh, you can begin to argue is not the right shot on that particular point. That's a good first serve. 40 30. here in the second set. See Martina serving here. Baseline rally. Going to watch her coming in. Chris hits. We can see there the wind is affecting her because she can't hit the regular overhead. She has to take it over. Kind of the Connors yeah. sky hook shot. Right. Took 
off. Fifteen left. The points are getting a little bit longer. Fifteen left. Martina may be finding a range. She looked like she's finding a range right there at the end of that last game. They had a couple long points and she won them. And, then, and there she sprays one again. That was a point we made earlier. She she leads in singles titles. Chris Everett. She has not won as much money, but almost nine million dollars. Who's counting? The IRS. <laughs> <laughs> Do they count that? Oh, that's a great shot. Yes, it's good. But Chrissy's won 154 singles titles, far and away ahead of anybody else. People, you know, put this in context. We had Billie Jean King, who was replaced by Chris Everett, who was replaced by Martina, although they, they jockeyed for position. And now Steffi Graf has gotten into the picture. You know, the, the uh, leadership in the women's tends to, I think, last a little bit longer than the men's. I, mean, I think you can make a case both ways, but I, my argument is that uh, somebody like Margaret Court dominated, then Billie Jean dominated, then Chrissy dominated. Uh, with a little bit more consistency than the than the men have had. It's wide. Thirty all. Thirty all. I would attribute that to the uh, the men's serve. Yeah. It's more of an equalizer. Here we see both players. Uh, interestingly, as soon as you see one player hit, you'll see the other player turn the shoulder, getting that early reaction to the ball. It's one reason they look so smooth even when the ball's going back and forth in a hurry. We're going to see Martina approaching onto Chris's forehand. Chris going for the nice pass, but Martina stretches and makes <laughs> the volley. She loved making that one, too. Yeah. She's trying to get herself psyched up. I really think that was what she was going on there where she started Looking gesturing at the crowd. somebody in the yeah. crowd. Looking for something to get her going. making the uh, kind of desperation law, but she made such a good one and put Martina in defensive position. But look at that get that, that Chrissy made. Wasn't enough, though. Martina just made that great backhand drop shot. Yeah. Shot she looked like a basketball player. Yeah. Which she is in her spare time, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Go back to Deuce. That was Martina's chance to break serve there. I don't know. I mean, I, I consider it to be kind of a good error. I mean, she was going for the right shot. She's yeah. got to take some risks. You're right. It's only deuce after all. Just 
made it. There's a lot again. Goodness. So good. That ball and we're it back in. He is keeping her moving though, left to right. Okay, she went for it there. Yeah, it tries to return. In kind. She is really pressing Chris back for that fourth. That'll be in. Good lob. That's a good lob. Good lob. Good And the advantage goes back to Nava Kalona. So we haven't seen one overhead being hit in the air. Yeah, Chrissy, Chrissy tried to lob this, and she did. I, I really thought she was uh, out of the point. I thought the wind would blow it out. But it uh, turned out she was out of the point. Look at Martina. She's still <laughs> trying to get herself into the match there. Psyching herself up. I mean, that's one of the things you have to say has to stand out. And, uh, so somebody that's a level of competitor that Martina is. I mean, she's down, but she's not out of the match. Not at all. She's not letting any of this stuff keep her from thinking about winning. The deuce. But that's the thing about a younger player or a less experienced player after losing the first set six love, they might be so embarrassed. Here's Martina coming in. She comes in with what looks like a pretty good approach shot. But uh, Chrissy simply makes that lob look easy at this point. She's really got the touch on that thing. She's using yeah. the wind and she's not not over hitting and not under hitting. That's one of her best shots. <laughs> Frustrated, she's uh, she's playing better. You know, points are lasting longer. I think, though, that really that kind of point is to Chrissy's liking. I mean, she's out there grinding it out like she usually does. And uh, you know, if Martina doesn't win one of these games pretty soon, it's just going to get harder and harder for her to climb the hill. service though was the toughest scramble she's had leading three games to two in the second set after winning the opening set six love we'll be back with more from the Virginia Slims of Houston in a moment more of the statistical story here Kathy we're going to look at points points at net which obviously Martina is much more eager to get to the net she's won 11 out of 22 50 percent Chris, who comes in on more of a sure approach shot, has won a higher percentage, four out of six. It's one of those statistics that style is more important than those numbers because yeah. it's way ahead. Could be misleading if you didn't know what was going on. You know, one of the things that came out of the Compu Tennis uh, stuff was that they uh, began realizing that, that Chris was winning a fairly high percentage of the shots that she came to the handle, but she was coming in on so few. This was at a time when she was losing most of her matches Martina, and right about that time was when she started increasing the number of times she came in the net. Now, this doesn't reflect it particularly, but she's winning from the baseline right now, so she doesn't really have to. That's the key. She got early. Martina was making errors, and so Chris has really never had to change anything. First real yeah. error that yeah. she's made. Points we've seen from yeah, I think it's only the second time she's done that. <laughs> second serve, that was a fault.
She's really had trouble with that baseline on the far end of the court as we view it. She has missed that one repeatedly. Martina getting about 48% of her first serves in at this point. Chrissy's been getting about 70. Of course, Martina's trying for more, but it is an indication of how she's going to play. We're seeing much more baseline points rather than Martina coming to the net. Interesting. 40-15. Here's Martina serving, uh, second serve. She still comes in. I don't know whether that was a factor in why Chris missed, but when Martina comes in, Chrissy obviously has to have a little different return. Second serve. You can expect a few more mistakes from Chrissy as the day wears on. So if it's hot, she's been out there. She was almost perfect in the first set. It was the first overhead we've seen in the air. It was rather a short one. Chris put it away. 40-30. Some of our crowd have been able to 6,000. Let's look. It's Chrissy coming in down the line on a very good approach shot. Martina all stretched out. Chris pounding the overhead away. Oh. Second serve. Martinez is putting a lot of pressure on herself. It seems like to, to do a lot with the ball. I mean, even in that second serve, she's just cranking that serve. Well, we are at a crucial point in the match. Chris is up 3-2. Martinez serving. She needs this game. I'm, I'm real puzzled by the uh, lack of sharpness that Martinez displaying today. Uh, she's been so sharp all week. And, uh, you know, you were mentioning earlier that she thought Chrissy was a little bit uh, edgy during the week. It seems like it's a reversal. I think both of them are a little edgy, but I think that Martinez showing a lot more. Of course, when you're winning, it's easier to, to feel good about things. Watch both Chris and Martino over you know, several several years. Yeah, what kind of physical condition do you think that they're in compared to how they were ten years ago? Oh, can't even compare. You can look at the pictures in the magazines or whatever. It's just the definition, and Chris is much thinner and more muscular, and much more concentrating. Both of them on their fitness. It's necessary to stay in the game, especially at the ages that they are. She missed one, and we go back to Deuce. It was sitting right there for her. One thing that's interesting to note, I, I think, is that uh, if you saw a less experienced player, you see a junior in these same situations, a lot of times you see some tentativeness when the match gets real tight, whereas here Martina is still going out after all these shots. She's missing them, but she's, it seems to me she's, she's at least trying the right things. Yeah, you're right. She has to keep, she has to keep going for it. How else are you going to win the match? goes back to Martina. It's very sloppy of Chris. Looks like a third error in the whole match. Jeez. She's really letting down. <laughs> Maybe they've all come in this uh, game, I think.
Okay, so Martina approaching off the Three forehand all. down the line. Coming in stretched out. Makes that fabulous volley. Do you think Chrissy's down the line is more. Do you think she likes that one better than her cross court? Yeah, I think so. Especially when Martina's making that tough approach and Chrissy is stretched. She has to go down the line. <laughs> Second serve for Everett. We're even at three games apiece here in the second set. Well, she's made more than one shot. She's complaining she hasn't made any. But... Well, she's missed a ton of them though on that baseline on that end. I think she's. She needs to get this game and break Chris. She wants to get ahead for once in the match. Oh! Ball was good. First time. Ball was dead. All you heard was fall. Ball was dead. So this will be first here. David Robichaud on the chair changed the call of the Lions person. Chrissy can afford to let down at this point. I think if she loses this game, it's going to be a completely different match. Yeah, the momentum will, will switch over to Martina. Oh. That was a near genius shot, but uh, here, here we got Chrissy coming in, and she comes in on a good short ball deep to Martina's backhand. But again, both of them are lobbing well today. They're using the wind well. Chrissy tries a shot that's a little bit risky, but she would look like a genius if she'd made it. 15-30. Yeah. And then we see two points where Chris came to the net. I know. That's and lost the point. By that. This is by far the closest that Martina has been to breaking serve in the match. See Chris basically toying with Martini in the baseline and then hitting a beautiful backhand down the line right in the corner. That couldn't have been a better shot. That shot. I thought she'd really nailed it, but she so she couldn't have missed it by too much. But uh, all it takes is an inch or two. First hit the net. see Martina going for a high tosspin lob to Chrissy's backhand. She's way off the court. Martina comes in. She kind of snuck in there. I don't snuck know. Snuck in, yeah. There. Put the volley away. <laughs> what a shot. She's getting much more aggressive. Robert Delova breaks serve for the first time and takes a 4-3 lead. 
in the second set. This is the last point of the game there. Martina hits a good stretch volley there just to keep the ball in play, and Christie tries to go back down the line. Martina's waiting there for him. That's a good stretch volley. Of course, she had open court. And she's just, you know, you can tell just by the way she hit that ball that she's going to take that yeah. game and run. Well, the quaffed hair has been blown a little bit in the air, but <laughs> I noticed your dew was a little skewed, yeah, Greg. It's all gone. Right now. But it's a great day. It is, as we saw earlier, around 85, but the humidity is low. And it's a great day for tennis. And now let's talk strategy here. Navratilova, that you mentioned during the point, Jim and Kathy, that, that was a real big one because, you know, we mentioned before, six love, first set. So what? It's only one set. And now Martina is at least ahead in this one. And she can even the thing up if she just holds serve. Martina's serving now, 4-3. She's up a break. She's with the win. So she definitely has the momentum in her favor. Say, she's Jim? just been gritty. I, I think, you know, she's really hung in there through those games when she just didn't feel like she was playing well. Here was the way the players were seated coming into the tournament, and you see on the right the world ranking. Robert DeLoma and Everett, two and three in the world, one and two in this. Well, you know the, uh, Zena Garrison. the Houston fans were a little disappointed Lori McNeil went out early in the singles, but uh, we're going to get a chance to see her. She'll be playing in the doubles final this afternoon. Zena Garrison also against each other, actually. All right, we're just set to go. Robert Lovis serving. Oh, and I put it up. Oh. A better return. Chrissy's balls just don't have the bite on those drop shots that Martinez had. Martina can hit that ball and just make it drop dead, whereas Chrissy's is just a little bit more likely to sit up a bit. Martina's looking like a different person now, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's rolling now. She also shows there, doesn't she, that the importance of getting her first serve in, because she's got a hard, powerful first serve, and it's a real world of difference. Yeah, her whole game is based on that serve. But she's not getting it in. She's in trouble. Nice passing Great shot. Job. Chrissy's got a few tricks left in her <laughs> bag, I think. Some players decide they're not going to lob as much on a windy day. Personally, I think if you can control the lob at all, that it's worth it a lob on a windy day because it's so it's so much tougher to hit that overhead. Yeah, absolutely. Late fault call. It was long, Martina. I don't think Martina complained about the call. She kind of wanted to call a little quicker. Tina hit the perfect approach there. Yeah. 30 40. Here's Chrissy stretching way wide. She goes from being way behind on the point to all of a sudden winning a, winning a point with a clean winner. Chrissy's got some determination of her own today. Yeah, you're right. in the eyes. Martina takes off the glasses. Perspiration, perhaps. There it is again. My, my, you can't throw the ball up close. Hey, it's uncanny. 
So the service break that Nama Tolova got in the last game is given right back. Normally, if a player comes in on the opponent who's behind the baseline, the odds are in favor of the incoming uh, approacher. But uh, Martina had Chris way back, and Chris has is, is pulled it out like, you know, three, three times in that one game. It's very interesting now, for all. that <laughs> Martinez wondering <laughs> what, what was that also Slice advantage there, she snuck into the net. 15 all. Chris, Mar Chris and Martina. Martina slides one down the line. You can see Chris is stretched out. So Martina sees it, sneaks in, puts that volley That's away. Great move. notice about Chrissy in that situation is just that uh, here we're going to get a chance to see her do it. Martina is going to look for the chance to come in here. Here it is. She goes deep to Chrissy's forehand. Now Chrissy just stays so calm. She, she doesn't overreact to those shots. It's real easy to panic and try too good a shot. At least it's easy for me. <laughs> The only one. <laughs> Thirty all. Thirty all. are trying to get Martina geared up here again. I think they'd like to see a 3-7 match. I think that if the court were six inches longer, <laughs> this would be a real close match. Maybe she's been practicing on a different court. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. There's a story in the early days of the tour when they uh, had uh, put together a center court that was different than the courts that they'd been playing on the rest of the tournament. And they, uh, the, the guys were noticing that when they served, uh, they, they could hit the crud out of the ball on one end and they couldn't get a serve in from the other end. It turned out that they had misaligned the service box. So there was three feet longer on one side, three feet shorter on the other. That's quite a difference. <laughs> Advantage goes to Everett. That's another unforced error by Martina. Here's the ad to go up 5 4. Martina was in real trouble on this one. She came in. Now, she barely tips this. This is a great extension and jump. Chrissy's in pretty good control there. Martina just made that passing shot look easy. You can just see the difference between 
the serve and volley are Martina and Chris at the net. Yeah, her agility is amazing. Four back at deuce. <laughs> Martina coming in behind the second serve? No. You're right. There she had an easy shot. She tried to get a little bit too much. And that's because Chris has been passing her, hitting her with this great lob, so she's trying to do just a little too much with the approach shot. There's such a fine line there. Hmm? You do too little and Chrissy hurts you and you do too much and you miss it. Yeah. Jesus! Mm. Okay, so Everett wins the game, now leads it 5-4. She's one game away from taking this one in two straight. We'll be right back nation in the 40s but you're about to have to go up another notch aren't you jim i didn't want to bring you would up. have to bring it up <laughs> <laughs> you awesome. know the nice thing is see you can keep on playing down it's just that uh, they don't let you play up i can't play in the 50s yet Greg. oh okay <laughs> well that's good also the pro at the houston racket club as we take a look at our competitors Hi. martina navratilova making some adjustments to the racket she looks like she's putting in those little, she's trying to save her. Stringlings or whatever Yeah, call. trying to save her. I'm sure she's using gut on the You know, clay. I think this is a, maybe a chance to talk about this rivalry. I mean, this has to be one of the most enduring sports rivals, rivalries in any sport in history. I, mean, I can't think of a, you know, a, a more endearing rivalry than this one's been. And a friendly one, too. wasn't always that way at the beginning. They were, I think, when uh, Chris was number one and Martina was the challenger. You used to hear some things said between the two. Now they respect each other for what they are. I guess that's the security of being a veteran who's won anywhere between nine and $12 million. <laughs> has been able to hit the lob to that end. Martina's not been able to hit anything to that end, keep it in. Yeah, she really has struggled this whole whole day. Chrissy three points away now. Still three. 15 all. 15 all. Martina not serving appreciably better than she was in the first set. She's getting slightly more than half of her first serves in now. Second serve. <laughs> we have Martina. We're going to see Martina on the replay. Taking this rather short ball, whacking the forehand. It's a little short, and Chris just places that forehand on line. Pass. She's just been Beautiful spreading the play. needle. I mean, yeah. every one of those is landing with the foot on the line. Martina has not made the shots, and Chris has. So if you want to just succinctly condense the whole match into one phrase. You really have a knack for that. Condensing that thing. It's away from winning the match. This is pressure for Martina right here.
Pressure nope. for Chris. That's sure. Martina now has to hold it or it's over. I think it would be interesting as if Martina starts with all this here. Back on that first serve, she's thinking about. Mm -hmm. Frustration, but same token. Now we'll see Martina again having to decide whether to come to serve and volley or stay back on her first serve. Now remember, the shoe was almost on the other foot a year ago. Martina was in a situation where she could have closed it out. It didn't. Chris won. That wind is really kicking up right now. You can hear it. Martina's balls are just stopping on the other side of the net. Both of them being very cautious right now. Yeah. And that's out. Everett has the advantage. Advantage just got slightly larger. Second serve. Oh. And a double fall ends it. Chris Everett defends her championship at the Virginia Swims of Houston with a straight set six love, six four win over the world's number two ranked Martina Navratilova. We'll be back with more from the West Side Tennis Club after this timeout. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to present the tournament director of Virginia Sims of Houston, Barbara Perry. Barbara. Ladies and gentlemen, it's fun to be the director of this tournament. Chris and Martina enter every year. They reach the finals every year. They play incredible tennis. And a little more tennis history is made in Houston. So Chris and Martina, Thanks for coming back. World, But most importantly, we want to thank you, the tennis fans of Houston, for your support. Thank you. Well, if the matches that have been played this week are any indication, uh, the race for the number one spot in women's tennis for 1988 is going to be very, very interesting. Uh, Chris and Martina surely will be in the heat of the race. And uh, Martina, tough match today, but as always, you played like the true champion that you are. Yeah. On behalf of Toyota and Virginia Slims, I'm proud to present you a check for $22,500 as a singles runner-up. Congratulations. I thank you for your kind words, but if I played like a champion, the score would not have been as it was. I really have to, uh, th this is not to take nothing away from Chris, she played a terrific match, but uh, I really, uh, I'm still trying to figure out what happened tonight. Um, oh, that's right, Simon. So, uh, today was, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know if I should laugh or cry, it was so pitiful, but uh, I hope that I'll do better next year. I, uh, uh, anyway, I'd like to thank Toyota for uh, 
being the presenter as well as letting us drive those great cars around this week. And uh, Virginia Slims for uh, having been here for so many years. And uh, I'd like to say sorry to all my supporters over there, especially Tim. This is not worth crying. God. I know I'm not going to run for president. Thanks. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, to present the winner's prize, the manager, marketing promotions of Virginia Slims, Ina Broman. On behalf of Virginia Slims, I would like to take this opportunity to once more thank all of you, the fans. It has been your... If you could please come up. It was eight, 18 years ago, we were privileged to have, through the strong work and the support of Joseph Coleman, our chairman of Philip Morrison's hard work of Gladys Hellman that brought the first Virginia Slim series, which started here in Houston. Then the prize money, the check was $1,500. Well, we've come a long way, baby. <laughs> and Chris, it is with great honor that I present to you today this check from Virginia Slims for $50,000. Sorry, I'm, for $50,000. Thank you, Chris. I thought you were going to say $150,000. Anyway, thank you, Ina. Thank you to Virginia Slims for being our sponsor worldwide. And Toyota for, for being the sponsor this week. Um, Barbara Perry, you did a great job as usual. You're one of the, the best promoters around. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for your support. I felt it all week. I don't know if, if you really it was genuine or you felt sorry for a 33-year-old out here. I don't know. but. <laughs> I, I really appreciate it, and I'm sorry Martina felt that she played pitiful today. I don't think she did in that second set. She had me running around there, but I don't think she should be too upset. She's won five tournaments this year, and she's currently the leader. She's So far this year, she's had the best year than Steffi or me, so I don't think she should be too upset. <laughs> take anything away from her either, but I don't think I played too shabby out there, so. <laughs> I'd, I'd just like to also thank Juan for hitting with me this week and Andy for his great support and all my relatives here in Houston, and I'd certainly love to come back next year. Thank you. with more from the West Side Tennis Club where Chris Everett has won the singles championship for the Virginia Slims for 1988 after we take this time out. Glorious <laughs> Chris Everett is Jim Parker. Jim? Well, Chrissy, it's a great match you played today. Did you, uh, you surprised at all? Yeah, I was. Um, obviously, Martina did not play her best match, and that first set she was making a lot of mistakes. But um, in that second set, I thought she started to play a little bit better, and she's such a champion that she could have turned that match around and made it a three-set match if, you know, if I didn't watch it and, and get too relaxed. So, oh gosh. <laughs> Sorry about that. What do you think that uh, today was any indication of uh, the way the year is going to go? Uh, we get kind of a preview of the two of you each year here in Houston before some of the major tournaments. We've got the French Open coming up, and you've played traditionally real well in that tournament. Uh, I know that Martina has in mind that she wants to regain the number one ranking. What are your goals for this year? Well, first of all, I, I have to say that, um, you know, Steffi and Martina are still the two favorites. I mean, once in a while, one of them is going to have a bad day or one of us is going to have a great day and beat them. But I think as far as consistency, they're still winning the big tournaments. And that's why it's a thrill today for me to beat Martina. 
Well, you really played well, and uh, we were all aware that, uh, although maybe Martina feels that she was having a rough day, that uh, it was partly your fault. Do you think that uh, the types of things that you're trying to do this year involve mainly the Grand Slam events, or is this the type of event that you can really put a lot of attention into? Well, I think if you're going to pick any tournaments to do well, and I think the Grand Slams are still the favorites among the players, but you know, a tournament like this or, or any of the other Virginia Slims tournaments, you still want to do well, and you still want to beat the top players. And because we're playing so much, um, you know, everybody's going to have their bad day once in a while, and I've certainly had a few against her. And, and I think, you know, bottom line is she just didn't play that well, and, and I really did play well. I've got a question for you from uh, Kathy <laughs> that I'm going to relay. I think uh, everybody will want to know how her engagement is affecting her tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy wants to know how your engagement uh, has been affecting your tennis lately. <laughs> you know, I think um, the second time around, I'm, <laughs> I'm more used to. I know the pressures and I know the great feelings. I think it's not distracting me at all right now. I mean, I'm basically I'm having a great time off the court, and then on the court I'm just trying to really concentrate on my tennis. So I think I can balance the two pretty well. You seem to do that pretty well today. Well, we appreciate you stopping by, and congratulations. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Greg. Thanks a, thanks a lot, Jim. Boy, Kathy, you kind of zung her with that one. Uh, I think everybody wanted to know that. <laughs> okay. Well, the final score again in two straight sets, it was... Everett over Navratilova, 6-love and 6-4 to win the singles championship at the Westside Tennis Club in Houston.